where former President Trump will headline North Carolina's state Republican convention next month. After being largely out of the spotlight since leaving office, Trump is expected to make a public speech at the June 5th event. The speech will be closed to the media. North Carolina has a pivotal Senate race next year to replace retiring GOP Senator Richard Burr. Burr was one of the seven Republicans who voted to impeach Trump for his role in the January 6th Capitol insurrection. Meanwhile, Arkansas Republican Governor Asa Hutchinson laid into President Trump for his role in the ousting of Congresswoman Liz Cheney from her GOP leadership position. The fact is, everyone in America sees this as a punitive measure for someone speaking their conscience, and that's not good. Uh, secondly, it looks like uh, uh, the former president is directing uh, who can serve in leadership, and that's not good. Uh, you know, we have many voices in the Republican Party. I, I contrast it or not, I compare it to the view. You have multiple voices representing the view. There's multiple voices that represent the Republican Party today, and we should not de facto make the former president uh, as the guardian of our party or uh, the leader of our party. Our next guest has pushed back forcefully on former President Trump's lies about election fraud in Georgia. Georgia's Republican Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan joins us now, who said he is not running for re-election. In announcing his decision, Duncan said, quote, it always feels coldest right before the sun rises. I believe that is the exact moment in time the Republican Party is caught in right now. And I am committed to being part of creating those better days ahead for our conservative party all across the country. Sir, thank you much. Thank you very much for being on with us this morning. Also with us, we have NBC News Capitol Hill correspondent and host of Way Too Early, Casey Hunt, and chief national correspondent for the New York Times Magazine, Mark Leibovich. Joe. Well, uh, Lieutenant Governor, uh, there's also another saying, uh, Chairman Mao's saying that John McCain loved to quote. It's always darkest right before the lights go completely out. And there are a lot of Republicans who feel like that's where uh, the party is. Liz Cheney, of course, kicked out last week of her leadership role. You can't, uh, you've made the wise decision not to run for re-election because, well, you told the truth. And you told the truth about, like, math, about vote counts, about elections. How does the Republican Party uh, how did, how, how did, where does its revival come from when you look at these polls that show 80 percent of Americans are glad Liz Cheney got run out of office and two out of three Republicans still think uh, because they read conspiracy websites or Facebook posts that the election was stolen? Well, there's no way to ignore the fact that there is a vacuum of leadership inside the GOP right now, and we're either going to ignore it or we're going to try to fix it. And I've decided to be a part of the team that's going to fix it. And uh, we're launching GOP 2.0, which isn't a new party. It's just a better pathway forward and hopefully going to be a safe place for conservative Republicans to call home. And, uh, you know, look, Republicans all over the country should be outraged that the news cycle about Republican efforts have been around removing Liz Cheney, from, who's one of the most conservative members of the U.S. House, uh, and Andrew Clyde making outrageous comments on, on the, uh, in his role in the House. Instead of talking about increasing interest uh, rate or inflation rates and global conflicts and cyber hacks on pipelines, these are real issues that Republicans should be talking about. And there's better days ahead. It's going to take some time to get there, but we're going to keep working. So, Lieutenant Governor, uh, can you tell me at what point you realized in your political career, because uh, I, you know, I've been doing this since 94, and I can tell you when I was in office, actually ideas mattered, being conservative mattered, fighting for balanced budgets mattered. Fighting for a strong national defense matter. Like, we were driven by the issues, uh, and that's why we got reelected. At what point did those conservative issues stop mattering more to rank and file voters than whether you were part of a personality cult and you pledged uh, eternal fealty to a former reality TV host? When, when did that happen? Yeah, I, I think it, you know, it happened over time. But when we started worrying more about a person than a party, uh, that's how we got here. And, uh, you know, look, we, we've got we've got uh, 
four years to try to get this right. Uh, and for me, I believe a majority of Americans believe a Republican's best to be in charge of the economy, public safety, and national security. And we should never leave a meeting without reminding everybody why we're good at that. And, and that's really where we drifted away from. Um, you know, this doesn't need to be a personality contest. This needs to be a policy over politics platform where we go to work every day and try to solve real problems for real people. So um, let me ask you a personal question. Um, I've got, um, I'm surrounded. I, I, I live uh, in an area where everybody in my neighborhood, almost everybody, is a Trump supporter. Uh, all my uh, friends from childhood are Trump supporters. My family members are Trump supporters, and we usually get by uh, by not talking politics uh, or not talking about Donald Trump. They know. I mean, this is a crazy thing. They know in many ways I'm more conservative than they are on a lot of issues. Uh, but Trump comes up and we can't have that conversation. But when we do, I am stunned by the conspiracy theories that these friends of mine and family members of mine with advanced degrees buy into from deranged conspiracy websites. How, how do you deal with that? And how do you deal with the fact that the people that helped elect you because you promised to be conservative are now supporting a guy who doesn't have a conservative bone in his body? How, 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 how are you coming to terms with that? And what do you say to your friends and family members? Well, one, we, I have a, an instant solution. If former President Donald Trump got up to a microphone and denounced all the conspiracy theories and fraud and talked about a better day forward for the Republican Party, it would change in an instant. But that's, you know, I, I don't really see that happening. Um, and so, look, I think over the next four years, uh, a majority of Republicans are going to come back into the fold of a GOP 2.0 mindset. For, for different reasons. Some are going to get there because they 100 percent believe in new strategy. Some are going to partially believe and some are just going to get tired of losing. The hole that Donald Trump dug for us Republicans is going to show up in almost every political race from coast to coast. Mayor's races, city council races, congressional races, and certainly in the next presidential race. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do, but look, I think voters are going to start waking up and wanting to vote for an adult in the room. They're not going to look so much to to the personality. They just want an adult, somebody who's going to look them right in the eye and tell them the honest truth and give them an honest vision ahead for the greatest country in the world. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.